before we get into tonight's session um, and move on to the next strategy, do you have any questions about what we covered last time? And just to remind you again, all we really looked at was how do we approach the mindset of a client or a subject that has preconceived ideas that are indifferent to the way that we view hypnosis? Do you have any questions or thoughts from everything we went through last time? Um, no, not really. Um, I guess, um, I guess it's about, it's about having a, an explanation. Yes. And, and if they're, if they're prepared to listen, mm -hmm. then, um, you know, you're already, you're already into, already into breaking that loop. That's right. You need, so, we need to understand the mindset of our clients. Now, people at home might listen to this or uh, other, you know, um, professional hypnotists might listen to this and would firmly believe that the trance is more important. And if we take care of that, that'll destroy the, the, um, the incorrect mindset. The only way we can get to that point that we call hypnosis, that we call trance, is to have a mindset, as you've just said, that is willing to listen. It doesn't matter how good our techniques are, how good our approach is, if there's a wall there, there's a wall there. We need to overcome that wall, either go around it, go underneath it, burst through it, before we can even get to that point that we put a client into trance. Does that make sense? Well, absolutely. When, you know, when it was explained many years ago that um, that the client has to be willing, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, that it wasn't brainwashing, mm -hmm. then then that's the that's the first thing that we learn. That's right. They've they've got to you know they've got to leave the door open a little bit. That's right. Um, yes, the yes, the conscious mind is going to is going to be protective, mm -hmm. but we've just got to get it to the side enough mm -hmm. to get in there. That's all we need to do. We just have to yeah. distract it slightly, and then uh, start to stimulate the unconscious by distracting the conscious mind to get it out of the way. Now, how that's you do cool. that? is like asking how long is a piece of string there are so many different ways to do it now as the hypnotist we can go in thinking well i'm going to use this technique because i'm seeing a smoker and this is the technique i always use for smoking um, this is the one that is called the stop smoking uh, routine i'm going to use this because this will be like every other smoker i deal with and already we're pushing ourselves into a corner or categorizing and saying that Everybody is the same. Everyone has the same personality, the same leverage, the same motivation, the same needs, the same likes, the same dislikes. And this is far from the truth. If this was the case, we'd be dealing with a world full of robots. And we're not like that. We can't categorize and put people into a box. When it comes to hypnosis, the way we need to view it as a, as a therapist is how creative can we be? How many ways can we distract the conscious mind? How many ways can I be flexible enough to suit my client instead of having a client suit me? And I think that's a fundamental rule that we, and I fell into this trap when I first started. Um, I tried to have my clients match my approach. And while it worked some of the time, I was getting uh, just as many losses as I was fail uh, as successes. And this wasn't good enough for me. So we had to explore it in a new way to figure out, well, if this way is not working, what other options do I have? And when I started to address my clients and give them what they needed instead of what I needed, results started to skyrocket. Does that make sense? It does. It does indeed. And I've and I've felt the same with the questions that mm. that that colleagues and fellow students have have asked. Oh, yes. which way do you go about this? And and I tried this and I didn't get anywhere. Yeah. And 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 I think that's that's where a lot of them fall down is yeah. that they um, they go in with these preconceived ideas mm -hmm. that it's, you know, do step A, do step B, do step C, Correct. and the re results will be there. Yes. And it's not the case. Yes. And this already uh, proves the point. Um, you know, we get asked this question a lot when we're training students as well. They'll come up and ask, what is the best thing I can do for a smoker? What is the best technique I can use for an anxiety client? What is the best way to, to do a regression with a client? And this is already ex explaining to me as the trainer, you're already explaining to me your mindset. You know, some that's just how they do it, and that's fine. Um, if we get past that idea of wondering what is the best thing I can do for my client and consider to ourselves, 
what is the best thing I can do to suit my client, techniques will become a, a moot point. Mm. And hopefully that's what we started to uncover last week. So what I want to do tonight is go through some more strategies to really uh, cement in these strategies for you as a hypnotist so you can drop the idea of techniques and still get to the same place. So we'll take the same position. I will be a client. I'm going to change the context just to keep it fresh and more spontaneous. And again, your only role is to investigate it. And let's just see where your questions take you, where the dead ends are. If we run into some strategies that need to be talked about, that's what this session is going to be about. Okay. Terrific. Excellent. So I will take the position as a weight loss client tonight. So uh, take it away, start your questioning, and I'll give you the context that we're going to play with and let's see where it takes us. Okay. So Scott, um, what brings you in here today? Uh, well, Michael, I need to lose 30 kilos, um, but I just know that it's going to take a long time to do it. Mm. You know it's going to take a long time. Yes. Mm. So when you talk about time, are you what, what do you class as a long time? Well, I had a friend do uh, a weight loss session or sessions with, with hypnosis and it took him close to 12 times and he got okay results. I just don't want it to take that long. Hmm. 12 times. Yeah, so 12 separate sessions um, and it just, I don't have that sort of time. I need this done sort of immediately. Immediately. Mm. Okay. So what, what's got me curious is how long it took for your friend to, to work out that it was going to work and get his results or how long, how long he'd actually worked on it. Well, he actually told me about hypnosis and he said um, his hypnotist said it would take 12 sessions. So he booked him for the 12 sessions and he lost a couple of kilos along the way. So his results were okay. He just, you know, kept saying it's going to take 12 sessions and I just don't know if I can commit to 12 sessions. Okay. So his hypnotist told him it would be 12 sessions. Yeah. And this is what he told me. Did he get the results by the 12 sessions? Um. Personally, I don't think, you know, he probably could have just gone on a diet or something like that and got the same results, but he was adamant about hypnosis, so I thought I'd give it a go. I just I just don't want it to take that long. Uh-huh. Hmm. How long do you think it should take? Well, you know, Michael, I've been trying this for the last 10 years. I've done the personal training thing i've done the diet thing i i've i've walked with a friend around the block i tried to keep myself motivated i've bought all the healthy food and it's just it just takes so long just to even see just a little bit of results and i just uh, i don't know i get so frustrated with it i'm just wondering whether whether it's a problem you've got with time or whether it's a problem you've got with the weight Excellent. Pause right there. Beautiful job so far. So let's break it down. What do we know? Without assuming anything, what do we know? Oh, he's, he's really, really obsessed with the time that, that, that it takes Correct. To, to achieve something. Correct. And, and he says he's tried everything under the sun, mm -hmm. um, but he hasn't given hypnosis a try yet. Correct. And he's only got his friend's um, hearsay on, on what it was like. Sure. And he's already doubting that. Yes. Right? And, and judging by, um, by my understanding of, of, um, of his approach to, oh, he said it would take 12 sessions. Mm -hmm. That limiting belief has already been put in there. Correct. Excellent. 
So already, just from a conversation, we can hear the same theme arising. This client has categorized his problem as what? A weight loss issue. Yeah. So if he comes into our office and has previously booked in and said, Michael, I want to lose weight. If we were to jump straight into our weight loss routine, we're running up against that first wall. And we can already pick this apart logically because like you said, and this is just him saying we'd have to uh, find out ways to prove this or find out if he's lying to us or just telling us uh, bits and pieces that we want to hear. He's tried the diet thing. He's tried the uh, the motivation. He's tried the, the good food and all that sort of stuff. So all of these fails that should contribute to some weight loss to keep him satisfied has already failed him in some shape or form, which lets us know just indirectly that it's not a weight loss thing. Does that make sense? Mm. Because we know... Although there's millions of different programs, millions of different things out there that say this is the best weight loss uh, routine, this is the best weight loss diet, you can probably agree that no matter how they frame it, what food they call it, what type of diet they call it, it consists of the same things. Move more, eat better, and stop eating so much junk food. Those three things are pretty consistent inside any diet, no matter what you call it, right? Yep. And for the majority of society, this is all they need. So why is he a separate case? This proves to us indirectly because it's not a weight loss issue that he's got. And the Mm. same theme that's arising is something to do with time. Now, as a hypnotist speaking to you, you've probably heard your client say this, have you not, in some shape or form, like, how long is this going to take me to quit? I don't have this amount of times. It needs to be done immediately. I want this to happen now. Have you heard that desperation of time before? Um, Yes, and and I've... I, I've heard a lot of, uh, you know, the failures. They all talk about the failures, Correct. and it's a very, and it's a very conscious conversation. Yes, it is. Right, because it's, I guess, I guess it's their conscious mind trying to suss out whether I've got a half decent argument to come back with. Yeah, it's the same conversation that they have with their friends that they have with everybody. Weight loss is so hard. I can't lose weight. I'm never motivated. It's that same conversation. And the the funny thing is, you know, if we're deciphering between what is conscious and what is unconscious information, a client will say it like this, Michael, I failed. I want to lose weight. I want this, but I don't have a lot of time. Yep. And you can hear that last part of the sentence that you really need to listen to is the unconscious mind expressing itself completely, but we get so tied up in, oh, this is a weight loss session. How many sessions are going to take? What am I going to do with this client? And we miss that very quick response or when the drop of tone or it's like a little sly remark on the side that we really need to be paying attention to. Mm. Okay. So we can assume, just for the sake of this, uh, this portion of the training, is to put the weight loss thing aside. We could get very mixed up in the weight loss strategy. Yeah. We could start think, thinking, well, if he can't lose weight, maybe he needs motivation or maybe he needs to appreciate healthy food over bad food. But that's already us going into assumption. Yeah. And and maybe, you know, maybe it could be um, that something else is, has... Um, has a higher priority on his to-do list. Excellent. Hold that thought. What do you think the higher priority is? And he's well, already said it a few times. There's something that's 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 time related. Yes. Right? That that's time related that that he's more concerned about achieving yes. than than all the other stuff because that's going to take a that's going to take a big slice of his time mm-hmm. and Excellent. that's not and that's not what um, what he wants yes and and of course he'll fight it tooth and nail yes but we need to I need to bust that open yes. and find out find out what he'd really like to be doing yes you're 100 percent correct his top priority right now is there's a time limit that he's put to losing the weight for a reason we have no idea about yet. Yeah. So until he achieves, until he uh, gets to a point of saying, yes, I can do that in this amount of time, or once this time bind that I'm caught in is resolved, then yes, I can agree to any weight loss strategy you have. If we, however, go for the weight loss strategy or tell our client, hey, it's going to take us 15 sessions, 20 sessions, 25 sessions, 
and we keep missing him repeating, I don't have this sort of time. I don't want it to take this long. And we as a hypnotist take the position and say, well, this is what it takes. This is what it takes to lose weight. You have to commit to these sessions. We are already, um, and excuse the horrible metaphor here, kicking a dead horse at that point. Yeah, because he's because not willing to listen. That's not where no, he is. And, 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 he's, and his undivided attention isn't with it. Yeah. So we need to find out what is imp- we can drop the idea now of weight loss. We can find out why does he want to lose weight. It could be for many reasons, but right now, yep. because the same theme's been repeated of time, we need to find out what's the time limit he has, maybe what's important, what has he got at the end of that time limit that he wants to show off his weight loss, what is it about that time that he's so uh, cemented in that we need to find out more details about? Okay. Yeah. So let's pick up. Let's see where this takes us. Okay. So if if time wasn't a an issue, mm-hmm. what would you be doing right now? Um. Well, I just got to get this weight off. It's got to be done fast. Hmm. Fast. I'm. What's got me really curious is it's it's like there's a yes or no for you doing something, and and this is what's holding it up. Mm-hmm. And the more time you spend procrastinating, you don't get to do it. I'm wondering what it is that you need to do. Or have I got it all wrong here? Well, I've got to get this weight off. Uh, It's got to happen quick. I don't have the amount of time my friend had. I need the results. And Michael, you know what? I really need them quickly. Okay. What do you need them for? Excellent. Good question. So now what this is going to lead us towards is the reason for this time. Okay. Now I'm going to make this a little bit harder for you. Let's just see where this goes. Um, Just because. Because. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's like why, isn't it? It's a crooked letter and you couldn't make it straight. If you if you had more time or you spent your time doing something that you haven't tried already, would that not get you to where you need to be? Yeah. Or am I wrong? Absolutely. It would. Mm. Okay. So looking at it, what is it that you haven't done that could get you there? Excellent. Pause right there. What frame is that question? Good question. What is that what is that implying? I'm I'm trying to get him to shift that that thought, oh, I've tried everything, I've done this, I've done that. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm working I'm working the the opposite mm-hmm. because you can't have one without the other. Sure. There's something that he's there's something that he hasn't done or he hasn't seen a particular way. Yeah. And and I'm I'm coaching that that unconscious mind out for an answer because his conscious mind can't give it to me. Sure. Yeah. It's too focused. Yeah. It's too focused on on oh, you know, I've got to get it done. I, you know, while he's busy waving his arms around and and jumping up and down and screaming, yeah, he, he's got all the time in the world. Sure. Do you see how? Um, and you're hundred percent correct. Do you see how by offering or framing a question like, well, what's what could you do that you haven't done is now pointing towards a solution. Hmm. We don't want to be there yet, right? Mm, absolutely. What did we find out when we asked him, why is this important? I can't remember exactly what you asked. What did oh, he just say? Because. Excellent. Why would this be something to not avoid? Why could, if we dismiss this, this conversation would keep going around in circles? When oh, so- because it's just arguing backwards and forwards and I've got to... I've got to try and get around that. Yes. Because there's something there's something he's hiding. Thank you. And that's why I was that's why I was edging towards something that he hasn't done. Yes. Okay. Right? When your client that, comes up uh, with something like just because, there's two ways to take it. 
Um, and obviously, we're working over Skype. We don't have a camera on at the moment, so uh, it's a little bit harder to do if you do have a Skype client and you can't see it. And because we're role playing, there's no unconscious moments. There's two yeah. ways to take it. If a client blatantly says, oh, you know what, well, Michael, just because, and they're not physically or emotionally attached to the outcome, you may as well stop the session right then. Mm. However, just for the sake of this training tonight, let's say you asked me that question in another shape or form and said, well, you know what, why is this important to you, Scott? And I said, um, just, just, it just is, Michael, just because. Yeah. And you can hear there's something there, like you said, that they're hiding. Yeah. This is the point where you need to probe further. Because whatever they're hiding right now, there's a couple of way, the couple of reasons they could be hiding it. Either it's very private and they don't want to tell you and you need to address that. Okay. Yep. Or they're embarrassed to tell you. Okay. And they don't have complete trust that you'll take care of their feelings and their needs. Yep. Or there's something to do with uh, he's become embarrassed that he might present himself as a failure. So there's all those things in Canada as well. Yep. So when it comes across for this, we, we're our clients very emotionally attached. We need to find out what this because is. So how okay. would you, uh, without skipping around it, this is the point where you can be very uh, straightforward with a client. How could you reassure a client that, you know, this is a safe place. I'm here to look after you and that you suspect that there's something behind that because how could you present that without being too upfront and too rude, but enough where it lets my guard down enough to tell you what's really going on. Cause right now um, he's running you around in circles. The weight loss I thing, that's not it. The time yep. thing, that's part of it. But whatever this because is, is going to, uh, if you will, take the lid off the jar that we can get all the goodies that are inside of the jar. Okay, well, you understand, Scott, that that the conversation that happens between you and I stays between you and I. Yeah, I just, I just want to make sure, Michael. I just, is this going to be a private session? I don't. Oh, absolutely. We um, we have a code of ethics that we have to work to. Okay. And that's that's part of that's part of what we do as a professional hypnotherapist. Okay. Well, yeah, just I feel very embarrassed about this problem. I know you're here to help. I just feel really embarrassed about it. And and as as I've found with with many clients before the embarrassment quite often hinders the the resolution to the problem. Mm -hmm. So if you can just put that to the side a little, then we can work out what what's needed to get to the bottom of this. And then that embarrassment just goes away. Excellent. Wouldn't that be good? Excellent job. So what we've done right now is we've totally disarmed the session, as I call it. We've stopped talking about weight loss. We've stopped talking about time. We're addressing, just like we addressed last week with our smoker, we're addressing the first objection, which is, Michael, I'm really embarrassed to tell you what this is. I want to tell you, but I'm not sure if this is going to be private. I don't know if I can trust you enough. If we turn around and say, hey, um, everything's going to be okay. What is it? Just tell me what it is. Come on, we're wasting time here. You're setting the wrong feel for the session. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So if our client is feeling embarrassed, we're going to see this. You can hear, you're going to hear it in our voice. This is a great time to boost your client's confidence and go, look, I understand it. I get really embarrassed about certain things in my life, but I'll tell you one thing. Not only is this session going to be between you and me and 100, 200% uh, sure of being private and between you and me, it's not, nothing's going to come out of this office. This conversation is going to stay here forever and ever. That not only will I guarantee this, but you should be very proud for the steps you've taken to actually get to this point to tell me that there's something is embarrassing. I mean, we're all human. We're not perfect. We're all scared of embarrassed about things. So how about we just talk about this enough so you feel comfortable and let's just see where